wake up and smell the coffee. It's a classic. <laughs> we started with a classic Costa Rica. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's, uh, again, it's sort of classic, familiar, but not boring. Right. <laughs> it has a, a floral notes, yeah. kind of clean, peachy fruit notes. It's, a, it's bright, but sweet at the same time. It reminds me, uh, I have to check the body out, but it reminds me of the La Manita coffees from George Howell promoted early in the days of specialty coffee, a La Manita estate in Costa Rica, really was the first estate coffee that was publicized in the specialty coffee business. True. I remember <laughs> walking in and, and having a La Manita at Coffee Connection in Boston in the 90s, and it just was awesome to taste that coffee. Do you, you get anything else in the nose than the the glowing overview. Well, I got your overview all right. I don't think I could begin to match it, except that I, everything you said is in this. It's very accessible too. So unlike a coffee like a Sumatra, where I sometimes have to, I feel like I have to do an explanation. This coffee is perfect for that person. It just screams right. everything about coffee that they like. I almost guarantee they will like it. And sometimes a more exotic right. coffee, that's, that's not the case. The, Acidity may be a little too aggressive at first when you drink it. It'll smooth out, and all the other good stuff is in there. Right. The floral notes, of course, are less prominent. The fruit, yeah. the kind of peach, peachy fruit. This time of year, we eat a lot of mangoes in my house because I love them. and. My wife is uh, Brazilian, and she loves them even more. I have a tendency, instead of peach, which is a familiar <laughs> note for most uh, North Americans, the, uh, I tend to taste mango. It has a little bit of a twist to it. This is definitely bit. more mango-like. Get a, a kind of cocoa note. Cocoa, yes. Not much nut, really. See, that's one of the glories of a coffee like this, as pure as this right. one, that you're not getting... Uh, I mean, wood notes can be lovely, particularly like sandalwood or cedar. I don't get much wood in this, uh, aromatic wood. Yeah. That's not... It's where it, it's floral and, um, and fruit. And uh, that cocoa, nice cocoa. Yes, cocoa. Particularly in the finish, I'm getting the cocoa. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'd sit here and keep drinking this coffee, but we probably ought to identify it. All right, <laughs> let's do it. If you're ready. I'm ready. <laughs> modest, modest coffee roasters, washed, high elevation, that's a nice logo, huh? Where are they located? They are literally, say, 12 minutes from my house. They're a they're fine roaster. They're a husband and wife team. It's a terrific, classic, uh, high-grown wash. Again, th this coffee is, is a perfect illustration of the strengths of a traditional Costa Rica. It's pure. It is pure. <laughs> Impurities can add a lot to coffees, and we may get some Costa Ricas that have technically have impurities. But this one, you see all of the, uh, the uh, fruit residue that uh, has been probably removed meticulously before drying, and the coffee was sorted. In other words, the meticulously taking out the, the overripe, almost black uh, fruit, the green and the yellow fruit, and only keeping the red going on towards purple color fruit. That's a very time-consuming, expensive kind of sorting. It's essential to producing a coffee like this one, or any good coffee, really. But, 
particularly uh, here. Here, if there were something wrong with the fruit, you could uh, you'd, you'd get it in the cup, and there's nothing at all wrong with the fruit. You're no. in a sense you're getting the taste of pure coffee fruit underlying uh, the the roast uh, character, which is very inobtrusive, very backgrounded, lovely coffee. The roasters, Marcus and Jenny Contaldo, they will only buy from uh, smaller farms. Yeah, they claim it's going to have cocoa, which you've already got, butterscotch. I don't know if I got butterscotch out of it. And uh, sweet, absolutely washed and high grown. I mean, this is, this is the... It is the Costa Rican coffee. It's bright as well yeah. as uh, sweet. Yeah. In yeah. other words, the tart, meaning tart, sweet tart. Right. The yeah. classic uh, illustration when you're uh, talking about coffee to consumers who are not uh, familiar with coffee language. You try to get them to appreciate the word acidity, which is used so much in coffee description, is to say it's like the the sweet tart of, of, re, of really uh, orange juice from really ripe oranges. Mm -hmm. Which, right, that, I'm not getting orange in here, but in other words, that kind of balance, delicious yeah. balance of, of tart and sweet. Yeah, yeah this has sure got that. All the way. Do you find uh, Costa Ricans ever to be uh, a, a little less in body? Sometimes when I get a Costa Rican that's a notch away from being the best ones, I find that that's where they're mostly deficient. But I don't, I'm not getting that in this at all. It's got plenty of body for me. Well, it's good that you brought up body. I, I, I went right past it. It's a sort of a, a medium-bodied coffee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. It has, uh, it's smooth. There are no, no sense of uh, astringent drying in it. But it, it doesn't strike one as syrupy at all, to me, anyhow. This is nice well, and medium. This is not the strength of this coffee. The no, body, that's right. That's not, that's not is, why you drink it. It's not yeah. the strength. <laughs> right. They're after that syrupy, you know. <laughs> right. So, right. Thick. Uh, so we'll see whether we get, get ones, uh, any samples with bigger body, but. That wouldn't be the reason for getting this. The reason for getting this would be have a very pure experience of a washed high-grown coffee with wonderful uh, balance of floral, fruit, and uh, cocoa notes. Yeah, that's, uh, that's plenty of so, compensation. <laughs> Please like and subscribe if you want to see more shows like this.